Hi guys, this is Brutus, and in this video I want to take a look at an interesting aspect of world connectivity in Bloodborne that I stumbled across while recording footage from my other videos and that I've become obsessed with in the time since. Ever since Demon's Souls, world connectivity has been a really big draw of the Miyazaki Souls games. Dark Souls 1 took this to a breathtaking scale, with late game levels visible from the very beginning of the game. This was further explored once camera hacks and map viewers became available on PC. Illusory Woe has been doing a lot of comprehensive testing on distant assets in Dark Souls and turned out some really great results. Basically the way that Dark Souls creates the illusion of an interconnected world is by using low res versions of other levels and distinctive structures in the background, but amazingly these assets lined up with the actual location of the levels surprisingly accurately. I'll put a link to his posts documenting these finds in the description. This video is seeking to do something in a similar kind of way. Bloodborne's distant level assets work much the same way as previously, with low res assets used to represent the actual levels in the game. An example of this is the Great Bridge, which can be viewed from the Cathedral Ward side, but isn't as detailed as its interactable counterpart. For example, the carts and luggage present in the boss fight don't load in this version. What I specifically want to talk about today is the spatial relationship between Yarnum, Cathedral Ward, and Old Yarnum. I've already made a video talking about the geographical inconsistency of Old Yarnum, how it appears much higher in elevation than it really should in comparison to Cathedral Ward, but it gets far more interesting the more you look at it. We know from Gilbert that Cathedral Ward is over to the east of Yarnum, and the Aqueduct Bridge is to the south of the Great Bridge, so if we were to draw a map of the two cities, it would look like this. Two cities separated by the valley of Old Yarnum and joined by two bridges. In order to map out the various geographies of the spatial relationship, we're going to be focusing on six key landmarks that can or can't be seen from the other points. The Two Bridges, Eosefka's Clinic, the Church of the Good Chalice, Dira's Tower, and a secret vantage point that I'll get to later. Right away from Eosefka's Clinic, we get a very clear shot of several key landmarks. The Church of the Good Chalice, the Two Bridges, and Dura's Tower off in the distance, as well as this distinctive rectangular tower with a pointed roof that serves as a useful point of reference. From here we get a sense of the elevation of Old Yarnum compared to the rest of the level. You can see a clear elevation difference between Old Yarnum and Cathedral Ward, with even the top of the tower being significantly lower than ground level in the ward. We also clearly see that the Church of the Good Chalice is located directly under the Great Bridge, in between the middle of three arches. The front of the church is also pressed right up against the aqueduct bridge, with the top of it being on the same plane of elevation as the bridge. Keep this in mind for later. Before we leave, let's get a sense of what Eosefka's clinic would look like when viewed from other vantage points. We have a rectangular section here, followed by a flat wall pressed up against a circular building. Moving down to the aqueduct bridge, we get a clearer picture of what was visible from Yosefka's clinic. The Church of the Good Chalice is indeed pushed right up against the bridge, so close you can practically touch it. If we go down the ladder leading to the pig sewer, we wind up at basically the same elevation as ground level in the church. Throwing items at this version of the church yielded no results, as pebbles and firebombs passed straight through it. We can also get a clear look at the clinic from here, which we already knew was higher in elevation, as well as Dura's tower, the top of which is slightly higher than the bridge also. We can also once again see the elevation difference between Old Yarnum and Cathedral Ward, with the entrance to Old Yarnum being visibly lower by a long shot than ground level in the ward. If we angle the camera down, we can see most of Old Yarnum's level, and particularly the open area leading up to the boss room is directly below us, and in fact runs underneath the bridge. This is obviously a low res asset with a lot of repeated textures and no evidence of details like oh the crucified beast patients. These relationships are confirmed from the Great Bridge where we can see the church and the aqueduct bridge as well as a clear elevation difference between the lower bridge and the top of Dura's tower. We also get a good look at what the clinic looks like when viewed from a distance. Moving down into the Church of the Good Chalice, things start to get a bit weird. We can see the Great Bridge running above us as expected, but it's rendered almost unrecognizable. There is only one arch instead of the three clearly visible from earlier. If we exit into the open space leading to the boss room and look up, we can see the Aqueduct Bridge. In one of my other videos, I used footage of this and coded the Great Bridge, so this is my official addendum to that mistake. You can clearly see both bridges from here, but they are both at the same level of elevation. 
The aqueduct bridge is clearly much higher than it should be and moved north of what it is in the earlier levels, running at least 30 meters above the front of the church instead of crossing it. Remember that from the bottom of the aqueduct we were close enough to throw molotovs at it, which would have placed us around here. Turning around we can see Deere's tower, and it appears to be quite a bit lower than the aqueduct bridge instead of it being higher, although it's hard to say from here. It's also not clear if we can see the clinic from here, I caught a flat wall, a rounded building, and the corner of a rectangular outcrop, but it's hard to get a good look. Moving into Deere's tower, we get further confirmation of all the weird elevation stuff. The aqueduct bridge is clearly significantly higher than the Church of the Good Chalice, and is quite a ways higher than the top of the tower. We can also see that the height difference between the entrance to Old Yarnum and ground level in Cathedral Ward has been flattened, leading to the inconsistency I previously described where descending five flights of stairs and a ladder somehow only moves us down one church. Think about this. Old Yarnum is placed much higher than it should be in comparison to Cathedral Ward, but much lower compared to the aqueduct bridge and the sewers of Central Yarnum. Or rather, the aqueduct bridge is placed much higher than everywhere else, being the same level of elevation as the Great Bridge and Cathedral Ward. And now we've come to our secret vantage point, the broken wall or shattered bridge where we pick up the monocular. This space is bizarre and unique because it's not visible from any of the other locations I've looked at in this video. This is especially baffling in the case of the aqueduct bridge, which is directly below us. In fact, this broken wall correlates to where the alternate raised aqueduct bridge when viewed from Old Yarnum would be, so maybe there's something there. From here, we can see most of Old Yarnum as from other points, but elevation-wise the level is clearly much higher than it should be, with the entrance of the level roughly equal to where we are standing. Remember that reaching this entrance involved descending five flights of stairs and a ladder. As a result, Dura's tower is so much higher here compared to the aqueduct bridge than it is anywhere else. The rest of the level plays out pretty accurately, but once we reach the bottom of the staircase where the open space before the boss room should be, the level disappears entirely into generic rock texture. The Church of the Good Chalice, which should be below and between the two bridges, isn't rendered at all. The Great Bridge has three arches here, but we can see that there's nothing resembling the church between them. What's even weirder is that in the distance we can see a double or recycled set of assets of both Dura's Tower and the rectangular pointed building. At the very least, we can see the clinic from here as well as the area where the central Yarnum lamp is, albeit in a much more low res form. Based on the fact that Yarnum's architecture doesn't seem to follow traditional laws of physics and make mind boggling leaps of logic, I think we can assume that this is a reference to Lovecraft's ideas of non-Euclidean architecture mentioned in the Call of Cthulhu. Nah, I'm just kidding. These inconsistencies really strained my brain to think about, but I was glad to have investigated and figured out how everything fit together, and I think I can understand why the devs made the levels the way that they did. It's obvious that Bloodborne is a game that prioritizes style over consistency, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. I want to make it clear that I don't think this is a bad game or that this was meant to be some kind of expose on sloppy game design. Rather than keep the spaces internally consistent, the developers were clearly searching for more cinematic environments and moments. They wanted the approach to the Church of the Good Chalice to be very foreboding and feel significant, which wouldn't have worked as well if there was a big bridge blocking the view. Likewise, they wanted there to be a distinct visual difference between the upper and lower portions of Old Yarnum, with the lower portion feeling like dingy alleyways never touched by the sun, which involved raising the rest of the level to hide in this contrast. I think overall it worked fine, and it took me a significant amount of attention, time, and research to notice all of this. Most players wouldn't have noticed it at all, I mean, I did it in my first dozen or so playthroughs of these areas, and we were all taken in by the game's atmosphere. However, I guess there's some part of me that feels like something was lost here, where maybe these issues could have been resolved if they had taken more time to iron out stuff like this. Maybe we'll just never see an interconnected world in quite the same way as Dark Souls 1 again, and that's kind of sad to me. That concludes my video on this topic. I hope you found this video informative and helpful, and if there's any other weird geography stuff you want me to take a look at, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you liked this video, please hit like and subscribe, and check out my other videos investigating Bloodborne's lore through a close detail-oriented lens if you haven't watched them before. 
This has been Brutus, and happy hunting to you all.